and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Okay, in, in Genesis chapter 26, my brothers and sisters, we have this amazing thing that happens. For the third time in the book of Genesis, we see a person who has some fear about their marriage. Uh, and so let's read this little story here about Isaac in Abimelech. They go, he goes to the south. He does the same thing that his father and mother did a generation earlier. So in chapter 26, now there was a famine in the land besides the former famine that was, was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Gerar, to Abimelech, king of the Philistines. And the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Dwell in the land of which I shall tell you. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and to your descendants I will give all these lands, and I will fulfill the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven, and I will give to your descendants all these lands, and by your descendants all the nations of the earth shall bless themselves. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. This is really profound right here, this blessing, because it's really preparing the Israelites when they receive the law. If you notice how God is underlining, I'm going to fulfill my promise. Your forefather, Abraham, he obeyed my voice, my charge, my commandments, my statutes, my laws. It's going to prepare Israel to understand how to be faithful to the covenant. So let's go to ch uh, chapter 26, verse 6. So Isaac dwelt in Gerar, we're in the south of Israel. We're in what Californians would call San Bernardino, all right? We're in a hot place. It's hot. You're in the south. It's dry. Okay. So Abraham dwelt in Gerar. When the men of the place asked him about his wife, he said, she is my sister. Have you ever heard that one before? I think I heard this in, in Genesis chapter 12. And I think I heard this also in Genesis chapter 20. And, you know, they, as they say, like father, like son. Okay. Why is he saying this? He's afraid. And what's ironic is God just made this incredible promise. I'm going to be with you and I'm going to bless you and I'm going to fulfill my promise. And right after the Lord appears to him, make this, made this incredible promise, he's afraid. And, you know, and it, there, there's something here that it, God does incredible things in our life. We come to Mass. We receive Jesus in Holy Communion. We hear the scriptures proclaimed. And then we go out of the church. And sometimes I see people fighting right as they're leaving the parking lot, yelling at others, you cut me off. And I think you're, you're, you haven't even gotten off the church property and you're already fighting with somebody. You've probably seen it too. So let's continue on. She is my sister. For he feared to say, my wife, thinking lest the men of the place should kill me for the sake of Rebecca, because she was fair to look upon. When he had been there for a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out a window and saw Isaac fondling Rebekah, his wife. And so Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, she is your wife. How then could you say she is my sister? And Isaac said to him, Because I thought, lest I die because of her. Abimelech said, what is this that you have done to us? One of the people might easily have lain with your wife, and you would have brought guilt upon us. So Abimelech warned all the people, saying, Whoever touches this man or his wife shall be put to death. And Isaac showed, and Isaac sowed in that land, and reaped in the same year. A hundredfold. The Lord blessed him. The man became rich and gained more and more until he became 
very wealthy. Now, how does this remind you of the Exodus? Well, very similar to the, th the two stories we heard before. As I told you before, some biblical scholars call this a type scene, a series of circumstances and events that repeat again and again in the narrative. And what's it preparing you to understand? The Exodus. Now, isn't it interesting? God allowed him to be very fruitful. He sowed and he bore 100 fold. It's an example of being extremely fruitful, right? Do you remember what Jesus said? That if we become his disciples and we follow him, if in the parable of the sower, you remember the parable of the sower, Mark chapter 4, which talks about the word taking root in our lives and producing fruit 30, 60, 100 fold. Isn't that beautiful? It's an image of one who is fully living out the faith. And there's something else here that's beautiful is that he becomes rich in the land where he once feared that he would be oppressed. Now, where did this happen in Israel's history? Do you remember when Joseph's brothers came down to Egypt and they met Joseph and, and then they, they settled in Egypt? Do you know where they settled in Egypt? They settled in the land called Goshen. Goshen. And the land of Goshen was the most fruitful, fertile area in Egypt. Isn't that beautiful, right? And so they were in the most fruitful, fertile area in Egypt. Isn't that something? That's how God blessed Joseph and he blessed his brothers. And then when they, were, they became slaves and they went to Israel, they, they, you know, they eventually were called out of their slavery. They, they would reminisce and think about how good it was in Egypt, right? You know, that forgetting their slavery, of course, forgetting all they were suffering, they would only think of the good things, right? You know, we do the same thing sometimes. We look back we've been, and we think things were so good when they weren't. So he became very wealthy. And so now we go to verse 15. And, and uh, he, it's this story about wells in the land. Um, and it says that now the Philistines had stopped and filled the earth with all the wells, which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham, his father. And Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from us, for you are much mightier than we. Now, do you see the phrase here? Abimelech is saying, you guys have become so fruitful, and you're, now you're more mighty than we are, so I want to send you away. Do you remember uh, when the Pharaoh started to kill the Israelites? The fear was Israel would become much mightier than the Egyptians. Because why? Because they were being fruitful, and they were multiplying. So, once again, this story right here, it's preparing us for the Exodus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, 